guys, it is Krista. I think I'm on my Facebook Live page, um, Facebook fan page now. <laughs> Sorry about that. I really need some help with these videos. And um, yeah, so thank you so much for joining. I'm Krista of KristaDavid.com, artist working and living in New York City. So if you're you are joining me please um, leave your name in the comments and let me know where you're from and again thank you so much for tuning in um I pray that this shows up on my computer screen oh it's here finally <laughs> okay so I think it's here now I can see myself um, and see your comments so Thanks for tuning in, um, and I saw a bunch of people on my personal page, which I was setting this up so quickly, I think that's what happened, and that happened two weeks ago as well, and I didn't realize it, but forgive me, thank you guys for tuning in, thank you for coming over to the Krista David Art page. Um, yeah, so, okay, so we have a lot to kind of go over. My little screen is a little dirty. Anyway, ignore that. Um, we have a lot to go over this week because last week I was out and um, I was sick. I was, um, I couldn't log in to do the Facebook Live video because I couldn't breathe and this week I'm doing a lot better hi Stacy thanks for joining um, please leave in the comments um, where you're from like what state what part of the country or what part of the world you're from and if you have any questions you can leave them in the comments and I will um, answer them as we go through this video so um, lots have happened since um, we last spoke. Hi, Arsha. Lots, hap lots have happened since um, we last spoke. So I'm going to just give you the rundown, give you the summary. And um, and then I had some questions. I had a couple people email me and Facebook message me and text message me some questions. So I'll answer those towards the end. And yeah, so let's get started. So... The last two weeks have been, I would say, 50-50. Um, like I mentioned, I got sick a little bit, and I think that was the result of me working too many hours and not paying attention to my body. And then, of course, I also think my daughter, she had a cold, and I caught her cold. And, yeah, and I had to, like, suffer through and just rest. So I didn't get a lot of work done, um, but I did have some wins, so let's kind of go over those. First things first, if you've been following me on social media, and hopefully you have, I, um, actually the lights aren't as bright as I thought they would be. I have new lights, but we'll get to that later. Um, I think it looks a little better than the, the last couple weeks. So... Yesterday, I launched a collection of paintings and collages called Joy is Mine. Woo! Yay! I'm very excited about that, mainly because... Actually, can you guys hear me? Please give me like a thumbs up or a heart if you can hear me, because... Okay, yeah, you can hear me. Sorry, my volume is off on my computer. So I launched this collection of paintings and collages called Joy is Mine. You can check them out at ChristaDavid.com. And I'm pretty excited about that because even though I was sick, I still managed to kind of follow the plan that I set out as far as making the work, photographing the work, marketing or sharing the work, and now moving into this phase of selling the work. I wanted to see if I could go through the process of putting together a small collection of pieces, setting a date, 
a launch date and then doing all the things I need to do in between and do the, to make the work, photograph the work, market the work, etc. Now, it wasn't perfect, but that's okay. Um, I am not aiming for perfection. I am aiming for progress. So I learned a lot during the course of putting together that collection. Um, there are a few things that I'm very proud of. One, I do love the work. And it actually, let me just say this. As I was painting it, I was loving it, but then there were moments when I was not loving it, and then there were moments when I was loving it, but that's the beauty of art, I think. I think depending on your mood, you can look at a piece and just see so many beautiful things in it, and then there will be, sometimes you'll look at it and it'll be like, oh man, I wish I hadn't done that. But every time I look at the pieces of any of my art, really anything that's up um, around my house or anything that's in the studio, I'm always like amazed and like surprised by either the color combination or the composition or the brush marks or the brush strokes and it really does make me happy like for example I have a, a series of paintings on in my living room that are just above the, the um, television and it's six six paintings um, six I think they are like 16 by 24 and every time I look at them, I see something new and I'm like, ooh, ooh, that is making me happy right now. Or that looks like a weeping woman over there. I wonder what she's sad about, that kind of thing. So that's the beauty of abstract art. I think the more you sit with it and look at it, the more it starts to sort of open up and unfold. So at minimum, I would really appreciate if you guys just go over to ChristaDavid.com, take a look at the work, let me know what you see. Um, let me know what you like, let me know what you don't like. You can email me, Facebook message me, send me an um, Instagram message or anything like that. I really do love hearing about how people are experiencing the work. You can't get a full experience of the work via online, but it is um, pretty close. So let me know what you think about it. And yeah, but I'm just so excited that I said I was going to do it. I did it. I went through all of the feelings around making the work. I wrote about it as I was making it. Like I keep a journal. It's not in here, but it looks like um, looks like one of these inserts. As I'm working on work, I keep detailed notes about what I'm feeling while I'm making it, the choices I make as far as colors, compositions, um, the the folks who um, the inspiration for the work. So I'm starting to keep detailed notes as part of my art practice. So that has been awesome and that has been really great. Next up is, um, again, like I said, continue to spread the word about the work. But then I'm also working on a, a bunch of collages for submissions to open calls, etc. So that's a win. Yay, collection launch. The second thing that went well is I did submit some work to an open call. I made it just in time, last day of the open call, um, at this gallery called the Field Project Gallery in New York City. And um, I found it through NYFA, which is the New York Foundation for the Arts website, nyfa.org, if you're interested. They have all sorts of art-related opportunities on there. And I submitted some collages. I was sick, I couldn't breathe, but Thankfully, the call wasn't um, so laborious. It was just some images, uh, I think an artist bio or statement, and that's it. And the way the show is curated is based on a panel. People will look at what was submitted, and then they'll curate something um, from all the submissions. So we'll see. I'm going to keep submitting work just because I have work that's piling up which is making me happy because um, I'm starting to see some themes and just cohesion in some of the work so I'm pretty excited about that and I'll be working on some more collages in the next coming weeks but in the meantime I will be um, working very diligently to try to find homes for the work that is um, currently for sale so please take a look. Please also share, even if you're not in a position right now to make the investment to buy fine art for yourself, because I know it's an investment to spend a few hundred dollars on 
art, but um, even if you are not in the position to do that right now, the, one of the ways that you can help me is just by sharing the, sharing the work. I really appreciate it. So those are two things. Um, what else um, awesome happened this week? Um, oh, I went to a couple gallery um, um, show openings. Actually, I think it was just one I went to, and it was at Monte Fury Hospital here in the Bronx. Jill, if you're listening, thank you so much for introducing me to Jody, the curator. Um, she did invite me to a show that she put together with some work that was com she commissioned from this artist, um, and the work was pretty good. It was um, it was sort of um, a photography and collage um, exhibit. So that was great, and I was able to talk to the artist. She's very nice. Her name is Emma. I can't remember her last name, but um, I have plans to meet up with her to talk more about art. But that was good. You know, I went to the, the show, found the artist, asked her a whole lot of questions about our art practice because I'm just so curious about how artists work. And, again, it was I did that even when I wasn't feeling well. But So that was a win. Um, what else is going on? I think that is pretty much it on the art front. I am just making a lot of work. Oh, I wanted to show you all, um, to give you a sense, because it's hard to give you a sense from the images online, but this is a, um, this is the size of house, um, one of the smaller pieces from the collection um joy is mine so you can see it's a nice size and then the collages are of course they need to be framed they're on um heavy watercolor paper and they're about this big and you frame it and you put it on your walls and it's lovely so yeah that was fun to make so i'll continue working on that um, I think that was pretty much it on the art front. I'm pretty sure I'm missing some things, but I feel like it was a productive week. I think the one thing that I'm learning, and I'm probably going to institute this this coming week, is that I can spend literally all day painting and making collages and making art and love it. I mean, I really could probably do it eight hours a day, six days a week and be okay. But the reality is that um, you have to do more than make art to, to make a living from it. And so that's where all the business stuff com comes in, the administrative stuff, reaching out to people, you know, networking, um, writing um, blog posts or newsletters or um marketing, all that stuff, and I'm just starting to, to really think about, okay, what would be a, f a fulfilling spiritually, emotionally week as far as the hours in the studio? So I know I can't do 40 hours, but I'm going to try my hand at doing half that time, 20 hours a week of actual creation, painting, collages, etc., and then make sure that I give at least 10 hours over to some of the administrative stuff um, and then the rest of my time will be on the public health um, work that I'm working on. So I'm going to experiment with that this week and just one, definitely pay attention to how I feel because like I said, I am completely filled up by working eight hours, nine hours, 10 hours in my art studio making art and I'm happy and I'm in the zone, but I am being very realistic about how do you make a business out of um, your work, the work that you make. And it takes more than just making the work and posting an image of it on Instagram. No one's checking for me. <laughs> I have to go out and be um, proactive and reach out to people and um, tell them about my work, etc. So it takes a lot more legwork, which is fine. I'm, I'm up for it. But I am thinking to myself, okay, so I need to cut back uh, on some hours 
be very clear about the number of pieces I'm trying to get made per week. Um, be very clear on how many um, open calls that I want to submit to or residency applications, um, which I haven't done any of those yet. And just be clear on like what are the, the targets that I'm trying to meet as far as reaching out to people, pieces of work made, that kind of thing. Because if not, I will just be like running around my apartment covered in paint, happy. But the reality is, is I have bills to pay. <laughs> so I have to keep that in mind and like keep it balanced and look for opportunities where I can um, show and, and sell my work. So that's what I'm going to be focused on this week. Um, in addition to, to that little bit of um, wisdom, um, just about being balanced in my practice, um, I will be focusing most of my time, not most, but a good chunk of my time at the beginning of the week, just so I can knock it out and be done with it, working on my public health work. Um, I think I mentioned this in the beginning videos, you know, I don't want to put, oh, thanks for the hearts, Oganaya, hi. I don't want to put too much weight on having to make money from my art practice or from my art, but I do want to sell my work. I, I want my work to have, to be in the homes of folks um, who love art and who, with whom my art resonates. But at the same time, I do want to be mindful that I want to start building a reserve of cash and the way that I know I can make money and be of, of immediate um, value is using my public health skills in research and evaluation and planning um, and communication. So this week, I think I have enough energy and sort of mental fortitude to really be aggressive and um, more open to um, seeking public health clients. I think I've been a little kind of like, no, I just need a longer break. I need more distance. I just want to make art for a few weeks before I can think about working with public health clients. But I think now I'm sort of um, um, ready to give that its proper time. So I'll be working on um, um, updating my LinkedIn, finishing up with things on my website for my consulting firm, which is named Crown Work. Um, so I'll let you know when the site launches. I am going to set a date, but I don't want to set it right at this moment and be impulsive. I need to think about um, the launch date, but it will be done very quickly just because I don't want to overthink it. I'm pretty clear about what my strengths are with regard to public health research and evaluation and planning, and I want to be able to just state that clearly, offer that as a service, reach out to my networks and see how I can um, either work alongside them in the, in the organizations that they work for, or if they can refer me to people who could benefit from my services. So that is what I'm going to do at the top of the week coming, and then of course continuing to spread the word about my work. Oh, I forgot to tell you about this other, I knew it was a third thing that happened that was so much fun. Um, so are you guys familiar with Darling Magazine? If not, Google them. Um, Darling Magazine is a magazine for women. It is, um, here's the latest issue. It's a, it's a quarterly, quarterly magazine, nice and thick, it's beautiful. This is the first black and white cover. It's usually in color, but it's really beautiful on the inside. And their tagline is the art of being a woman. So it is a magazine geared to women or, or um, individuals who identify as um, women. So um, she, I went to a dinner at this little, it wasn't little, it was a cute little studio in Chelsea the other night. It's called Dar It was a Darling Dinner. It was the first one they've ever done in New York City, and I was able to snag a ticket. 
and it was beautiful. If you were following me on Instagram, which you should follow me on Instagram, guys, seriously. The Insta stories that I post every day about my day, you want to see this. You want to see me making coffee in the morning. You want to see me walking around my neighborhood. You want to see me at these art galleries and museums in New York City. And you want to see me at these fancy smancy dinners like the Darling Dinner. I showed everything. All of the wine that they had, all of the hors d'oeuvres, and um, all, of the all of the cute um, decor. And then they did these cute little um, name plates on this marble. And I don't know if you can see it, but it says Krista. Wait, you can't see it. Okay, yes. So it says Krista, and it's in gold, and it's on marble, and it's just sitting on my plate or near my plate um, at the dinner. And it was a good conversation with women that I probably would not have bumped into otherwise. And it was just really nice. They gave us really nice swag, and, and the general manager, Catherine, was just really nice and kind and encouraged us all to stay in touch and to reach out to Darling. Um if we're ever in LA. So I'm hoping to be in LA so I can stop by their offices just to say hi. In the meantime though, I will be writing um, some content to pitch to the Darling um, blog. So that was one of the ways she encouraged us to sort of stay connected to the community. Um, my ultimate goal though is to be able to write for the print magazine, okay? But I do have to prove myself, so I will be pitching a few things to the blog. Um, but yeah, check out Darling. It's cute. It's wonderful. And um, yeah, so that was the other thing that was really fun. And where was I? It's 930, so we're technically done. But I have questions, and I wanted to answer at least one of the questions. Crap, the questions are in my cell phone but I'm, being, I'm recording via my cell phone. Let me see if I can remember one of the questions. Um, one of the questions was about financial targets and whether or not I am meeting my financial targets. I wasn't gonna answer this question this week, but I am gonna start by answering this question this week. I know how much money I need to make in order to pay my bills. I honestly don't feel like panic has set in too much, even though I do have these mini panic attacks every three hours or so. Total panic has not set in, mainly because, like I mentioned in the first or second video, I have enough to cover me comfortably until the end of the year, right? But time is flying. <laughs> it's kind of crazy. So... I think panic is starting to set in, um, or not panic, but like focus, concentration on making sure that I'm meeting um, financial targets so that I always have money, um, that I have money going into the new year sitting in my bank account. So that's a partial answer. One, I do have targets on how much money I need to make in order to kind of just keep myself in this apartment and keep my lights on and you know food and things like that car insurance um am I making that kind of money now no I would like to so and this is another reason why I'm going to get my life as far as my public health work up and running this week because I know it takes time to sort of groom people in order before they can sign over a check to you in the form of a contract, an executed contract. So I need to start those conversations now so that even if it does take a month to get the contract or, you know, get somebody at the organization to say, yes, we'll pay you X um, for whatever amount of time, that's, that, that can happen in November or December. So, yeah... I really need to get more serious about this money and manifesting this money that I want to make. I will tell you this, that I have some serious issues when it comes to money. I have some serious money blocks. I've always known this about myself. Anybody who knows me in real life knows um, my um, issues with money. And the issues I have probably are not what you think. I don't go around wasting it or squandering it or like 
you know, that kind of thing. It's just that I'm always conscious of it. And I'm always like, no, I need to have not one job, but two jobs. I need to have money coming in different places. I need to make sure that I am not without money because, quite honestly, I don't have anybody that I can get money from at this moment if something were to hit the fan. So I've always been very anxious about it. Um, but I'm not wasteful in that sense. So I'm working on my money blocks because... I want to be calm and peaceful so that I can attract the right kind of clients, the right kind of art collectors, and manifest the kind of money that I really want to have. And money is not everything, but it does. It can afford me to continue to live and um, um, support my art practice. And of course, buy art supplies, which are not free. They are very expensive, especially when you're using professional grade art supplies. Okay, seriously. Um, so, I am working on that. Um, another question that I got, and if you have questions, you can leave them in the comments. I don't see anything in the comments right now, but if you do have questions, you can leave them in the comments and I can answer them now. But another question that someone had, oh, this is one, and I'll leave it with this because this is a good place to, to end. This woman asked me whether or not I had any morning rituals. And I thought that that was a good question because if you know me, you've been following me for a while, um, I do have morning rituals. And I am, they are evolving now that I work from home. But what they used to be, back when I had a day job, I liked to, it was five things in the morning. It was morning pages and if you don't know what morning pages are google it it's this practice that i think julia cameron i don't think she i don't think she invented this the idea of it i think she did coin the phrase morning pages it's basically you wake up while you're still like sleep in the eyes you write for three you write longhand for three pages in a journal or loose leaf paper and you just write whatever comes to mind but Google it, you'll learn more about morning pages. So morning pages, um, prayer, so yes, yeah, spending some time with God and praying and, and, med and doing devotion. Lemon water, um, making some kind of art really quickly, and then moving my body, exercise. So that's in an ideal situation. I will just say that I don't think I've ever been in a situation where I was able to hit all five in one day. Still working on it. Now that I'm working from home though, lemon water has become increasingly important. I have to have it in the morning. It really just helps me um, calm down because I have been dealing with a lot of um, anxiety about my day and just so much to do and am I gonna get it all done? So I tend to have that before I have my coffee. Um, praying, I pray um, all day. Um, interestingly enough, I haven't prayed as much as I thought I would now that I have more time in the morning. And when I got sick last week, I remember saying, something's not right. I really need to spend dedicated time in prayer and then listening to a sermon online, which is what I did a um, um, couple days last week. So that is going to become more important and something I just have to do in the morning because it just keeps my mood up and then keeps me calm, which is a is really important if I'm going to be productive. The exercise thing, I was doing pretty good in the first couple of weeks because I had my Fitbit and I was like in competition with my um, colleagues at work, but then something happened where I fell off and then I just stopped wearing my, my Fitbit even though I was walking around the neighborhood. Just so annoying, but I do walk. There are days when I will have under a thousand steps and then there are other days when I will have 10,000 steps. And making art, of course, I make art every day now, which is so wonderful to be able to say that. There's no, there. yeah, it's just wonderful. And then, what was the other one that I needed to, I think that was it. And then my morning pages, I do my morning pages. And even not only do I do my morning pages, but I journal throughout the day, just because it just keeps me sane. And I use a Midori 
Traveler's Notebook. Um, it's one of these notebooks where they band it together. I got it right before I went to Greece. Um, it comes with these inserts, but I make my own now because it's just too expensive to buy inserts when I can just get some cardboard cardstock and staple some pages in there. So I make my own. And um, But I journal. As you can see, I journal in um, one of my inserts. I just journal all the time. So my morning, I do have morning routine, morning routine. I am going to try to be more mindful because I do feel more productive when I take care of myself in the morning and I and I don't want to see it as an inconvenience. It's sort of like you can do all five of those things in 90 minutes in the morning or even in an hour. Um, so I do have a morning routine. I'm trying to get into a night routine where um, for those of you who have Apple iPhones, they have this, if you did the phone update, they have this thing called bedtime. Check it out. So I set my bedtime at 11 and I have it set to tell me to kind of shut down at 10. So turning off the, the computer, the phone, and just kind of getting ready for bed and reading a little um, scripture, Bible scripture. And then just calming myself down. One thing that I want to add to that night routine, which is something I read today, actually, just about how your subconscious is working while you're sleeping. So one of the things you want to do is right before you go to bed is you want to jot down what are the questions or the problems you're trying to solve. Just jot them down in as, you know, as clear as you possibly can. Write them down right before you go to bed and have that be the thing that you think about while you're sleeping. And then when you wake up, you proceed to do the writing, the morning pages, basically. And just within the first 10 minutes or after, 10, after you wake up, wait 10 minutes, go get quiet, get still, and then start writing sort of what comes to mind. Um, and the research has shown that your mind, your subconscious, is trying to sort out whatever questions or problems you pose to it the night before that things will come up in the morning when you wake up that kind of thing so I want to add that I thought that was cool I want to keep I want to do some more reading on that and add that to my, my night routine so those are two questions if you have questions please let me know I am out here <sighs> making this stuff up folks making it up because I think I wrote in a newsletter this past week that I don't care what book you've read, I don't care what podcast you've listened to, what YouTube video you watch, there is nothing that can prepare you from leaving a secure job where they pay you a check every two weeks no matter what you do to being out here on your own where you have to take everything that you are built of and make that check for yourself. Nothing prepares you for that, ladies and gentlemen. Not even these Sunday summaries. So, with that said, if you have questions, I will be as candid as um, I can. And I'm very sort of uncensored. So, send me questions. I will answer them. And, yeah, keep sending. I, I really appreciate all of the the um, support and the well-wishing and just sort of the encouragement that you guys have been sending my way via text, emails, Facebook messages. For those of you who know me in real life, phone calls. I appreciate all of it because it really is challenging. Like you have to be built to be out here by yourself. And like honestly, I'm, I know I'm not out here by myself. Um, to have a, a, a large tribe of people supporting me and people I can just ask for help. But um, I still have to show up and do my own work. And I don't have a team to hide behind. I don't have, you know, a government agency to hide behind. I don't have anything, just, just myself. So if you have questions, ask me. It's helpful for me to kind of think through... Um, the response and then just to be able to give you the honest truth because I don't need you out here quitting your day job if you ain't ready okay all right so that's it we went over a little bit mainly because we were late 
Um, the lighting looks a lot better. We still have a long ways to go with my whole set set up. But I have a backdrop. I have some umbrella lights. We're getting there. We're getting there. Just hang in there with me. And the next thing you know, I don't know. Who knows? I might be in like a, a breather room doing my shows or like, I don't know, a real studio in the new year. That would be awesome. Okay, so I'm going to go. Oh, the last thing is today I did no work. I just played all day and it was fun. I read, I played, I tried new things and I didn't do any work. And I'm going to continue doing that on Sunday. The only work that I'm doing on Sunday is setting up these umbrella lights, turning on this camera and talking to you. That it was an awesome day. Um, and I'm not going to do any work tonight. I'm going to go and watch Netflix or something. Actually, no, it's almost time to go to bed. I am going to power down and go to bed so I can get up Monday morning and crush it. Because, guys, let me show you this. I've already made my weekly goals list. It's a lot of crap, well, not crap, a lot of wonderful things here that I need to get done. And if I can get this stuff done, OMG. Okay, done. This is And this is my Monday I pull things from here and put it here for Monday, and then I'll add the other days throughout the week. But, all right, guys, crush Monday. You can love Monday. You can love Monday. You do not have to go to bed sad. You don't have to be out there panicking because it's Sunday. If it's hurting you that much, then you need to figure out what's hurting you, and then you need to make some choices, some decisions, in order to have your Monday be different. I can't tell you what that is. All I can tell you is pay attention to how you're feeling. And if you are freaking out because it's Sunday and I know what that feeling is like because I went through it for years. Being sad, walking around your house, listless, can't go to sleep. And then you got to get up and deal with Monday. I know what that feels like. But pay attention to that. Figure out what's really, really bothering you. Figure out what you really, really want and start to make some choices about how to make it different because you deserve to love Monday. All right, dear friends, I'll talk to you later. You can catch the Sunday Summary Archives over at kristadavid.com. Click on the Events tab. You'll see Sunday Summary. Click on that, and I'll show you all the videos from the last um, several um, weeks. And until then, I will talk to you later. Bye. I'm going to get up now and walk over to my camera because I don't have a camera person helping me. <laughs> but bye. I'll talk to you later.